It is officially game day for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they head to Tampa Bay to kick off the preseason. And with it comes huge opportunities for five players. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk or subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Today, we are talking about the opportunity that comes with game day. We are three weeks through training camp, 12 practices. At this point, you're looking at the Steelers and you feel pretty comfortable about who they are, what they can accomplish who is going to contribute, who's on the verge of missing a roster spot, and who is on the verge of making one. But until they kick off the preseason and send a ball into the air in Tampa Bay for the first time in 2023, everything could change. And with that comes opportunities for, well, everybody, all 90 players. But there are five that I believe I've identified that have a pretty significant chance to earn their spot on the 53-man roster and even elevate themselves into, well, pretty significant playing time this season. And it starts with a name called Kenny Robinson, the safety out of West Virginia, local kid who has spent time on other organizations but just landed in Pittsburgh this summer, was viewed as a guy who didn't have much shot coming in here. You walked into training camp, Kenny Robinson was not a name that you were floating around. It wasn't a guy that you had on your sneakers list or a guy who could be a flashy pick or really anybody who should get any significant playing time. Kenny Robinson was a bottom of the depth chart, no chance of making this team, needed bodies type of player. Today we sit here, Kenny Robinson is the guy that I believe the Steelers want to make the roster has been given every opportunity to prove himself and has taken full advantage of those opportunities. When Minka Fitzpatrick did not start practice at training camp with the rest of the players, and then DeMonte KZ went down, and then Keanu Neal went down, you started thinking, what is going to happen to names like Trey Norwood and Miles Killebrew? And you didn't start thinking about Kenny Robinson until you saw him on the field. But Once he was out there, he never left. He was consistently with the first team. He consistently earned the next day of staying with the first team. At this point in training camp, he's got to be four or five interceptions deep at least. Has made multiple great stops on names like Allen Robinson, Pat Fryermuth, Calvin Austin, so on and so forth. He has held his own against the first team offense time and time again. And there hasn't been a moment where you thought, oh man, Kenny Robinson is a huge hole in this defense right now. It's been all positive for the West Virginia safety. A kid who comes in here and has a chip on his shoulder definitely has an attitude. I kind of like the attitude. I think Mike Tomlin and everybody else likes the attitude as well. You got a guy who chirps, but chirps in a good way. I mean, look at Marcus Allen and I get it. Not everybody was a huge fan of Marcus Allen, but Marcus Allen brought energy to the Steelers that the Steelers needed at times. And you always need that guy who's going to give you that boost. And I think Kenny Robinson does it in a different way. He's not running into sideline huddles and getting penalties. He's simply just talking, having a great time out there and making plays while he's doing so. You head into this first preseason game and you got to look at Kenny Robinson as a kid who's got a really good opportunity to earn his place on this roster. He's probably going to start and I would imagine that he plays most of the game because right now the Steelers are very, very limited at safety. If he could put up a couple of big plays and really showcase that nothing changes once a game actually happens or things get better when a game happens. I don't think you have any opportunity for anybody else. I think the Steelers now look at this and say, this is Kenny Robinson's job. Everyone else is just fighting for scraps. Maybe a guy like Trey Norwood could sneak his way back into the roster. But for right now, it is Kenny Robinson's job to lose. And I think at Tampa Bay, it's going to be 
very difficult for him to walk away without feeling very good about his shot at a 53-man roster if he plays well. We'll stick with the defense before we switch over to offense, and the next name is Luke Barku, a guy who was quiet at the beginning of training camp, wasn't making many plays. You kind of forgot about him, and at times you just thought, okay, this is still James Pierre's job because Luke Barku isn't challenging anybody and Madre Harper isn't playing well. So looks like James Pierre is the bottom of the roster once again, and that's not a bad thing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But over the last three or four practices, Luke Barku has emerged. He's had interceptions on the last three days of practice. You're feeling very good about the momentum that this kid has. He's only 24 years old. He's coming off a promising XFL season. James Pierre is still James Pierre, and the Steelers like that. And he's a veteran. He's reliable. He has starting experience. He has experience on this defense. It's hard to overcome all of those things if you're a challenger. But Luke Barku... He's making the plays to give him a shot. And if those plays continue in Tampa Bay and he could actually showcase, hey, look, in a game, man, I'm just as good as I am on the field the last couple of days. I could continue to make plays. I am flashy. I am a turnover machine, much like I was in college and a pass breakup machine and a you're not throwing the football to me machine, much like I was in the XFL. You have to do that in a live game. If he does so, I think this competition becomes real. And I think that him and James Pierre are now neck and neck, assuming James Pierre does not have a huge game himself. But if Luke Barku goes off and James Pierre stays quiet, it's going to be really tough to go into the final week of training camp and the second preseason game and not have a real position battle for the final cornerback spot in Pittsburgh. Switching over to the offensive side of the ball, Anthony McFarlane is the biggest name. The name I continue to talk about, he has stolen the show at training camp. He's been undeniably the best sleeper, the best end of the depth chart player that the Steelers have had. And I'm not going to toss him in the same category as George Pickens or Allen Robinson or Deontay Johnson, but I'm going to toss him into the same category as guys like Miles Boykin, Luke Barku, James Pierre, Kenny Robinson, any of these guys that you were hoping really stood out. Mark Robinson, I guess, would be another one who haven't or maybe have, but not as much as Anthony McFarlane because the kid's been a stud. He has improved his vision. He's improved his pass block. He looks much more comfortable in the offense than he has in years past. And in year four, you kind of see that there's some momentum right now, that this kid feels as if he has a spot on this team and he's ready to contribute to the Steelers This season, he's got to do it in a game. We'll see because he will get plenty of opportunities. I imagine him and Jalen Warren take most of the first team reps after Najee leaves. And I expect a quick departure from Najee Harris. And then I expect Anthony McFarland to be the bell cow for most of the rest of the game. He will have opportunities. He will have reps. He will have every shot to showcase himself in Tampa Bay. He'll also get chances as a kick returner, and if he does anything impressive or has himself a game as a whole, I don't think there's any competition left at that RB3 spot. I think he has secured it, and I don't know how a guy like Darius Haggins or Greg Bell or anybody else comes out here and beats him for that final roster spot. He just looks too good. And if he has a strong performance in an actual game, you don't need to see anything else from your running backs if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sticking on the offensive side, Gunnar Olszewski is a name that has emerged as of late. He looks much more comfortable. A year ago, in the spring, we were talking about how open Gunnar was, how he was always wide open. And I mean wide open. This year, things are different because. We didn't talk about Gunner in the spring. We're talking about Gunner in the summer, which means that the pads have come on, and unlike a year ago, he has not disappeared. Instead, he's actually had a stronger performance. He looks better as a wide receiver, but he also looks just as good as a pass block or as a run blocker, excuse me. He is determined to be a kick and a punt returner again for the Steelers. 
And I think right now he holds an advantage for that final roster spot ahead of Hakeem Butler and ahead of Des Fitzpatrick. The tough part here is that Gunner is a slot option and the Steelers already have two slot options in Allen Robinson and Calvin Austin. So do you need a third? I think that's what comes down to this game is Gunner has to show, hey, look, I'm better than Hakeem Butler. I'm better than Des Fitzpatrick. You're not going to remove me to keep one of those guys because I offer more on the football field, even if it's just from a positionless standpoint, from an everything else besides playing the slot standpoint. I can return punts and not muff the football. I can block better than anybody else on the football field at my position, which I think last year, outside of George Pickens, him and Miles Boykin were incredible in run blocking. I think if he catches a couple of balls and shows that he's got a connection with these quarterbacks, it's tough to say that there's a a real competition for that final wide receiver spot. And even if the team decides to keep five, I think they have an argument to keep another one in Gunner, even if he's inactive on Sundays, just because he's showcased that I can do this. I am reliable. I am a guy that is a better option than somebody that you might keep on the practice squad. I just think Gunner's got a real opportunity right now. I think Cody White's the other name to watch, but Cody White is a guy that I view as easy to slip onto the practice squad. You don't have to worry about another team picking him up on waivers. Gunner's probably gone if you do the same. So I think Gunner, if he showcases himself in Tampa, he's going to be tough to cut. And finally, the big one, Broderick Jones. Remember two years ago when we sat around and we had to talk about Rashad Coward starting at left guard for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the preseason opener because Mike Tomlin, being Mike Tomlin, had to make sure that Kevin Dotson, quote unquote, earned it. He wasn't given a starting job. There were reports floating around that the team was upset with Kevin Dotson's conditioning and how lack of in shape he was how out of shape he was I guess I I find it very hard for an NFL player to be out of shape that looks like Kevin Dotson and plays like Kevin Dotson but those were the reports and he had to earn it so Rashad Coward started the preseason opener Kevin Dotson came in with the second team and all you could pay attention to once that second team offense was on the field was how good and how dominant Kevin Dotson was and how the team could do anything behind him, and how he clearly looked like the best offensive lineman on the field with the second team. Broderick Jones has an opportunity to do the same. He's hopefully, and this is just my hope, going to play at least a series with the starters, and I hope at the same time Dan Moore moves to the right tackle and we get an idea of how well he can adjust over there if need be. And I think Broderick has the same opportunity that Kevin Dotson had two years ago to just say, hey, you put me on the field with a bunch of backups, and I am far and beyond the best player on the field right now. I can dominate anybody that you put in front of me because these guys are not starters. They do not offer the same level of competition or the same potential or the same abilities as the guys that I should be playing against. I think this is a shot for Broderick Jones, not to earn the starting job, but to make this a real competition, a real position battle for the left tackle spot, because right now it's not really one. I think Dan Moore could also show, hey, look at I'm good. I've developed. I've taken another step forward. I'm ready. But if he doesn't and Broderick Jones comes on the field and just completely dominates, it's going to be hard to walk into this final week of training camp and not make this a real position battle. And I think that he's got every opportunity. And as the 14th pick in the draft, you kind of have a pretty high expectation that if he does go out there with the second team and maybe even plays into the third team, it's just going to look unfair for him against whoever across from him. 